Hello. Uh, we are going to now start the main uh, part of the Ecromatrix. So this chapter is about identification. I'm not sure how many of you have heard about the word, the term identification. Uh, it's actually also in my case, I learned identification when I, when I, uh, in my uh, Ecromat PhD Ecromatrix class. So, but it's, it's not actually, when you understand it, it's not new and um, you implicitly, you understand what it is. So let me explain. I'm just giving you the bigger picture and the structural framework, how to understand uh, the identification problems in a general setup or how you can apply this idea to more general uh, models. So let me start with uh, the classical linear regression model. I assume that you have you have learned it from Ecromatrix 1, I believe so. So classical linear regression model, uh, first let me define my notation. I will try to maintain the same consistent notation throughout my course, but I, I will try, but I am not 100% uh, certain about that. Just let me try. Um, so as usual, yi, the dependent variable, i the observation of dependent variable, or the dependent variable of uh, dependent variable can be explained by observed covariate xi, i characteristic, observed characteristics of uh, individual i, and t superscript t is a uh, transpose, it's uh, maybe perpendicular, it, it's called perpendicular, but anyhow, it's transpose. Uh, xi transpose and beta zero. Beta zero is the slope of x, or you can think it as the marginal effect of x. When x increases by one unit, y will expectedly increase by beta zero. So zero means, so beta means a uh, parameter and zero means uh, the true value of the parameter. Plus epsilon i, uh, which is the error term or disturbance term. So that is the typical setup and maybe the most commonly used example in my class would be something like this. Y is the salary. Y is the salary of individual I and uh, XI is a education. Education, age, work experience and like test scores or other observed characteristics of that individual. And then beta is their effect. Uh, the, the variables effects on the salary when you attain one more year of schooling like if you give up mess, uh, uh, if you give up PhD then PhD degree then what would be your uh, salary like or what if you if you could finish the PhD program successfully then what would be your salary the effect is explained by beta Anyhow, it's, it's, it's typical, nothing much to, not, nothing new, no difference from uh, the standard. And I would like to say one word on the intercept. What happens here is no, like seemingly there is no intercept, but you may interpret that in two different ways. First, you may just simply imagine that xi includes the constant the one. So the first element, of course, the first element of x uh, is one. And so the first element of beta is the intercept. So this is one simple explanation. Where is the intercept? Or second, second explanation is that you actually had original model like this. You had uh, alpha zero, which is the intercept. So it's a separate intercept. But I, it's, it's cumbersome to bring alpha everywhere. We are not interested much in alpha itself. So the intercept is not of our interest. So to delete this, to get rid of this, what we do here is we are going to subtract the mean of the respective variable from each variable. Uh, I mean, so y minus its mean. So subtract the respect mean from each variable. So then y tilde, we define y tilde as a new uh, variable. We call this y tilde as the t 
demeaned variable because the mean is subtracted. So always y tilde has mean 0. x tilde also has mean 0. So every variable has mean 0. So in the end, intercept should be 0. So in that sense, the intercept is dropped. So you may just interpret this equation as this way. So if you imagine that all the variables have mean 0, then automatically there is no intercept. So you don't need to worry about uh, intercept. But you have to be careful in the interpretation because uh, interpretation of beta does not change, but uh, the mean is removed and x and y are deviations from their mean. So this kind of process is the demeaning process, demeaning, or uh, as I said, demeaned variables. It's an easy way to uh, understand, easy way to denote the equation. Uh, so I do this, I just skip intercept like by writing this because intercept is not that important. And uh, so, but sometimes, sometimes the intercept may be important then in that case, I'm going to write directly this way. So I'm going to write this way. I'm, I will study what happens to the intercept. But uh, maybe, rarely write this way, but often I'm going to write that way. But also, this is, in, uh, in most cases, I will assume that x is k-dimensional. The dimension of x is k. So for each individual, we observe k different variables like wage, uh, like say, age, experience, and like education, test scores, whatever you have. So those variables, number of the variables is k. But to, to ex for the sake of explanation, for educational purpose, k dimension is uh, sometimes redundant. So in many cases, the ideas, uh, the intuition can be delivered with one dimensional variable so i will simply write it this way in most cases i will assume that x is scalar one dimensional then uh, beta x is i will write beta on the left hand side of x uh, just to show that x is scalar in this case x is one dimensional so beta is one dimensional it simplifies a lot of things everything is one dimensional so you don't need to worry about uh, matrix notation so uh, it will be easy. But of course, there are some cases where a uh, vector variable is important. Like for example, if you want to study the relationship between x1 and x2, then of course you have to have a vector in x. Then I'm going to go back to this kind of thing. Uh, and also in some cases, I would like to pull all the uh, observations. We have n number of observations, and sometimes I would like to include all n observations into one notation, then it becomes a matrix. So uh, this, this like capital X, heavy capital X uh, uh, face implies a matrix. So it collects all n observations. So the first row is the first observation, second row is the second observation, and the last row is the nth observation. Of course, each row has k variables, k characteristics. And then in the end, it will become n by k dimension. So remember, k is the number of columns. Here, previously, we used uh, k for the number of rows. So we considered column vector. But when you pull them, you have to transpose and stack uh, uh, into n rows. Because y is going to be a, a column vector. So to match those uh, dimensions, we put n uh, as the number of columns, uh, number of rows, excuse me. So we use this notation and then, and then the equation looks like this. Epsilon, so in my typeset, Epsilon does not have that bold, bold face, like capital face uh, font. So, uh, but usually Epsilon does not matter because in this case, the reason why I use matrix notation is to, to, to denote that it's the full data. But Epsilon, of course, we, are, we don't observe Epsilon. 
So there is no data for epsilon, so it's not a big problem in many cases. So it is useful, the matrix notation is useful to write something like this. Oops. Uh, so uh, when you write the formula for an estimator, then all the data, all the information in the data must be reflected in the in the estimation. So combining all the observations into one matrix is convenient. That's why I'm using this notation, right? So I have defined notation. That's just uh, the, the rule I'm going to maintain throughout the course. I hope it's intuitive enough and consistent enough. Uh, and in the next video, I'm going to start the main uh, model, the theories and the assumptions. I will start from the basic assumptions of the regression model. So see you there.